So what we have here today is the ever so popular Arctic Freezer 36 cooler. So we're going to be reviewing it, we're going to find out why is it so popular, and if it is the right air cooler for you. So Arctic has been leading the charge in terms of thermal performance parts with their AIOs, with their coolers, with their fans, and it's no different here in the Freezer 36. The Freezer 36 is a single tower dual fan air cooler. It's 159 millimeters, and just to save you the time and the trouble, this is the best air cooler to get for any sub 200 watt CPU out there. So you can stop watching the video, go ahead and buy this. But of course, you can watch it until the end of the video. For the specs, it's very straightforward. It's a single tower cooler featuring two P12 fans from Arctic. And it also has four direct touch heat pipes. So that means yung heat pipe mismo, it's the one that contact with the IHS. So it's very flat here. And according to Arctic, that helps a lot with thermal performance. The P12 themselves are 120mm fans that can go up to 1,800 RPM and feature fluid dynamic bearings. As mentioned, this cooler is only 159 millimeters, so this would fit in a lot of cases out there. It also doesn't intersect with the RAM, so there's no RAM clearance issues there. And it's basically a very straightforward air cooler. For the aesthetics, it looks quite nice. This is the base variant of this, and it's got this aluminum top plate here that's, that looks like it's brushed aluminum featuring you know, the Arctic logo. So it's a very basic looking air cooler, but it also has a lot of variants. So it's got the base one. There's also an all black variant of this where the heatsink itself is black, and it also has an ARGB variant. So with that ARGB variant, there's also the base color version, the black version, and an all-white version. So Arctic has got you covered there. So before we go into performance, the testing, let's look at the unique technologies this thing has. So the most unique thing about this is the fan mounting. As you can see, there's none of that wire that goes into the heatsink itself. The fans are instead mounted by the snap-on screws. There we go. Um, we'll of course show you the bureau for this. They're basically round studs that clip into these round plastic things embedded into the fin stack. And it's quite unique and very easy to install. So while that mounting system is very unique, it's not proprietary. You can remove the round studs from the fans. They're just normal fan screws and install them into a different 120mm fan. So you can swap the fans for the cooler itself. A very popular alternative fan for this is of course the P12 Max from Arctic also, which features better cooling performance. But of course, as mentioned, you can use this in any 120mm fan. You just have to be wary if that different branded fan has a protrusion on the front or at the back, which might make it not flush with the fins themselves. But generally, that's not a big problem or issue. And while we're talking about the mounting thing, the mount itself on the fins are indeed plastic. And you might be worried if it comes loose, such as the nature of plastic. But no worries, Arctic is promising to replace that for free should that happen. Plus, the entire cooler itself has six years warranty. So finally, let's talk about the performance. So testing for this is multiple 30-minute runs of Cinebench R24 using a 14600K and a B760 motherboard. And here are the results. So during the testing, it had a peak temperature of 83 or 84 degrees Celsius and average at around 79 and 80 degrees Celsius. So for something this small, something this cheap, that is really good thermal performance, especially with the CPU that we're talking about, the 14600K. With this cooler, we did not experience any thermal throttling, and the CPU hovered at around 180 watts during the two 30-minute runs of Cinebench R24. So just a quick word about the testing. While we use Cinebench R24 always, you know, we use these synthetic benchmarks. That is rarely the usual scenario for any regular PC out there. With this test, it's pegging the CPU at 100% usage for an unrealistic amount of time. You know, unless you're running, you know, data simulations, rendering seven hours of videos, you're not going to be experiencing absolutely 100% usage of your CPU at a very long period of time. This is just to show you the maximum potential of the CPU and also the maximum potential of the cooler. And the Arctic Freezer 36 does not disappoint. So to answer the question, why is this thing so popular? Well, you've seen the thermal performance of this, so it is really good at a very small package. 
But the clincher for this is the price. Right now, it sits below 3,000 pesos, and that is for the ARGB variant for this, which is, you know, ARGB, that's always going to be more expensive. But to put that into perspective, the closest rival for this is the AK620, the Assassin 4, Assassin 4S, and the Freezer 36 confidently trades blows with those while being significantly cheaper. And as I've said, it is a very small package. So compatibility-wise, you wouldn't have a lot of problems with this. This can fit in the ACH160 or any case that can accept 159mm of CPU cooler. So what's the catch? So that would come with the socket compatibility. Currently, in the product website itself, this only supports LGA1700 and LGA1851 sockets. That's for the future CPU. For AMD, it only supports AM4 and AM5. So basically, only the latest generations of CPUs out there. So, you know, of course, that's not really such a big deal. However, it would have been nice if, you know, older systems can benefit from the cost-to-performance ratio, the value proposition of this cooler. And another thing, speaking of Intel sockets, when using this with an Intel CPU, this does come with a contact frame, which is a requirement for you to use if you're going to mount this thing. Now, that contact frame or bracket is special because it does require you to remove the ILM or the independent loading mechanism of your motherboard and replace that with the bracket. Now, in some cases, that does void the warranty for the motherboard. So maybe before installing this in an Intel system, make sure to keep that in mind. And while that process is kind of new to some builders, if you're careful with it, it's very simple, it's very easy. I've installed far more difficult air cooler brackets than this, so it, that should be no issue. Just keep in mind that some motherboard manufacturers might consider that voiding the warranty. So in conclusion, do we recommend this air cooler? Absolutely. If you're looking for a solid budget cooler for your sub 200 watt CPU, then this is the air cooler to get. It comes in a very small, very convenient package. So you're not left worrying about any clearance issues in your case, in your RAM. And you have a lot of aesthetic options with the color variants and the ARGB option, of course. Just beware some of the cons for this, some of the caveats. But if you're looking for great thermal performance without breaking the bank, then the Arctic Freezer 36 is a solid choice. Thank you for watching.